I'm Roby Price, and welcome to my workshop. Well, yesterday was a busy day. Today is pretty much the same. We're going to be downstairs today. We've got to redo the window casings downstairs on at least five windows. And you might ask yourself why. Well, we put in new gutters on the house, and those gutters hang a little lower. And the casement windows we want to put in won't open all the way. So we uh, solved one problem and caused another. But as I said, it's not the problem, it's how you solve it. So let's go inside and take a look at these casements. There's a little bit of demo, a little bit of trimming, and a little bit of reinstatement. But none of that happens out here. I'll see you in the house this time. Improvements to the homestead. Window casings, part two. We're downstairs and we just happened to be in the laundry room for this first one. We could have been in the bathroom, which is on the other side of the camera, but we're here. The, um, what we want to do is start to look at taking out these strips. I have to drop this casing down about two and a half inches. And the reason that we have to do this is these are casement windows. They're going to open wide, full length window. And if you'll notice right there, we have a gutter. That gutter is new. That gutter is a little bit bigger than it was. We started with five inches, now we've got six inches. And they're sitting a little bit lower because we took one of the drops out and have to go all the way to the other side of the building. So we're sitting a little lower than we were before. All that said, if this window were to open as a casement window, it's going to hit that gutter. That's why we have to bring them down. So what we have here is about one and a half inch drop. And before I can drop these casings, we've got to take them out. So we'll start with the trim, and anytime you start to take out something, anytime you do demo, you take yourself a utility knife and you score it. And you score it all the way down, and you're going to ask yourself why. Well, that paint will stick, and sometimes it'll stick more to this piece that you're taking out than the piece that stays behind. And if you tear that paint off the other piece, it never goes back again. You can caulk it, you can sand it, you can do all sorts of things, but you're going to end up repainting it. If you do this right, we may be able to put all these things back with just minimal touch-up. Little caulk, little paint, little touch-up. And that's the objective. So the first thing is, in a demo project, let's cut all the corners. Literally. Well, when you're using a flat bar, it's usually better to start the process in an area where nobody can see it. And of course that is way up here. Take it slow because you want, if it does, if the paint does start to pull, you want to be able to see it. Like right here, I'm already looking. I got a good clean line. I've already cut that. This is starting to look real good. The good news about this is that this comes all the way to the end, so I think we can probably get it to come down that inch and a half without too much trouble. The bad news is, this is a seriously ugly shade of blue. I see new paint in the future. 
Well, the trim came off without a hitch. And the casing is a little bit more difficult, but not appreciably. Just take it and work your way down, and it all starts to come out without too much trouble. There we go. No tears, no problems. Well, the last bit is the top, and that's probably the easiest. There aren't any implications. Everything else is out. So I'm not really worried about the cut. I am worried a little bit about this. I think we've gotten past it. So as I say, once you get it started, you don't need the hammer quite so much. Matter of fact, the hammer is almost in the way. All right. Now it's time to go to the shop. I've got a lot of nails to get out of these, and as you can see, this is gone. This side is good. I'll be square with you. I started pounding them out this way, and you know what? It didn't serve me very well. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking these with a pair of channel locks, getting a good grip on them, and just pulling them out from the other side. I should have started this way. It would have been much better. I wasn't thinking. So if I do that, I may have a little bit of a hole or I may have nothing. And this will make for a much cleaner reinstall when we come to time to take these boards and put them back again. I need to drop the top of my casing down about one and a half to one and five eighths inches. Really it's one and a half. I wanted a little extra. So I've taken a one by, I'm sorry, a two by three and I have used that. It is one and a half inches thick. This packing cardboard is a little less than an eighth. So that's going to give me my extra. So what I'm going to do, and I pre-drilled this, I'm going to drill, screw this up in the top of the casing, and that will give me my distance. And I've got this set up for both here and in the bathroom, which is on the other side over there. And it is simply a matter of just screwing it in place and then reassembling the casing same order we got it in. Now what I will have to do is I'll have to take off the same distance on each of the sides of the casings here and there and then of course the trim pieces will have to be reduced but the top should stay the same. And like this and I've got screws that are long enough to go in without issue. Now I want to sink those in deep enough such that they hold the paper in place but are not proud to throw off the, uh, the casing as it, uh, as it nails to the filler strip. Now I'll go get my nail gun and we will start putting this thing back together again. I think you caught me. I am doing a test fit and that is to make sure that this is doing what it's supposed to be doing and it appears firsthand that it is. Get this one turned around.
All right, now what you see me do is I put the top plate in and then I put the sides in. I don't need any nails to test fit this. This has gone in just right. Everything is where it should be. And the fit is so tight, I could probably put the trim in and leave it alone. But I'm not gonna do that. I've got my gun here, I'm gonna start shooting it up with some nails. But the good news is that the pre-measured amount that I cut off based on this is working. So I can do the same thing with the trim. So let me get this nailed up and put into place. I'm gonna go back to the shop, you won't see that. I'll go back to the shop and cut the trim and we'll finish this thing out pretty quick. I've already put up the trim piece on the other side and I've got this one in place. I'm going to hold him in place while I put the top on to do some minor adjustments. But all in all it's kind of about like you're following the old caulk lines and, and they're lining up pretty well. So I don't, I'm not taking a whole lot of issue here. This is an area where you wish you had three hands. So I just want to put this in place gently just to make sure that I've got him in about the right place and line this up. And that looks really good. So what I'm going to do here, there it is, right there. All right, and that looks good. So I will take this piece off, keep a little bit of pressure right there. And I'll put the final bit of pressure right here. All right, now, line him up just a little bit better down here. And now I've got my top plate put in, and this project is about done. Again, where is that third hand? All right, oh, nice. Okay, yep. Well, this is the first window that I'm going to tackle in the old part of the house. And I'm looking at this, I have to actually drop this down about two, two and an eighth inches. In looking at this window and, and the drop on that, uh, I'm a little concerned about that one. So we'll do this one first, but I suspect we're going to end up doing both of them in order to maintain symmetry in the room, and that's important. Now, again, we're in the old part of the house, and look how deep these casings are. This is a stone wall, and it's, it's a thick stone wall. Um, so when we take these casings off, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to find. We may actually find some of the original masonry structure, which is going to be very interesting because we've got to put these back up again. Now, the process is the same. I'll start with this top piece up here, pop him off, take these other two, try to minimize the amount of damage to the wood, especially where you can see it. And after the trim is off, then the sides come out and then the top. And of course, then we put a filler strip in just like before and we'll put the sides back in after we've cut them to length. So let me get my flat bar and we'll get started. I probably am not gonna put you through too much of this because you've already seen the process. But if we get a glimpse inside these casings and we see some unique construction, I'll clue you in on that. Well, I've got everything stripped down and I'm starting to look at this. And the more I look at it, the more I'm convinced that what you're seeing here, and I've pulled some of this away here, you can see the stone right back here. And if you look at this, you can almost see where the old window was. The old window was a uh, double sash. You had the, the window that moved up underneath the, the fixed part above. And you're seeing that in the paint. So I think this is the original casing. Now this house has been renovated several times so what we're seeing here even though these are wide boards they are nailed to the original casing so you know <laughs> and we're going to be doing the same thing. The windows just seem to keep getting smaller as we keep moving the casing in and in but that's what we have here and it's obvious to me so when we go back we're going to put the same 
trim moldings back in. I am not going to try to to salvage this. It's it's too old, too much work. We'll re-salvage this right here and put it all back. I've got to take this down to the shop, knock the nails out, and then actually cut a filler piece. And this is going to be interesting because I really don't have much of anything at all right there to nail to. So I'm going to end up pulling out some of that insulation and building a, a two-inch filler gap to go in on top so we can pull this down. And um, again, I suspect we're doing this window too, simply because they're so close. And if they're that far off in measurement, it's not going to look right. So I'm going to take these down to the shop, take the nails out, and uh, come back up here with a filler board. And we'll finish this one out. And then we'll see what they look like side by side. When I was disassembling this case, I noticed that there was a nail right here and it actually pulled some of the wood off the back of it. Now, I've had to trim this up, so the damage is gone. It was trimmed off on the miter saw. But I noticed the nail, and now I'm looking at this, and this has opened up a bit, and it's not quite what I wanted. So I could go back with the nail, but that's not going to hold it. And um, I think it's going to take a screw. But if I use a screw, I've got to be very careful here, because I'm right on this edge and there's a chance I could split this wood. So I'm gonna pre-drill it. And I've got to do it pretty close to the edge. I've got to pull this down at the same time. Now, having done that, that's the hole. That keeps it from splitting on the shank. Now, the screw has got a tapered head. And I don't want that to split it either. So I'm going to put a taper. I'm going to taper the hole with countersink. And that'll probably help. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Perfect. All right, so that's done. Now, you've probably noticed that I have a pretty good size gap here. Well, my trim is not going to come all the way to the top here. As a matter of fact, I don't think it'll get close. Additionally, I don't have enough insulation in there for when they put the new window in. So I'm going to put these side pieces on, and we're going to call this one good. I've got to come up with a backer right here and then a way to put the trim on. I think I'm going to have to take these boards out and replace them with new. And um, so this project, it's got legs and it seems to be walking away from me. So we're going to have to put on our shoes and catch up with it. It's just one more thing. Well, the fit's good and everything about it is, is fine, except I have about a half inch gap on the top there and there's no doing anything about it. So what I will do is I will tack this board in place and these boards up here are going to get replaced at a later date. Additionally, if you take a look in here, I've got a large space that I have to fill with insulation and I need a backer board in there. Otherwise, there's nothing to nail this to. So we've got a little bit more work to do and it is as I suspected. We're, uh, we're a little bit short, but it was going to happen. You had to lower it so these windows would clear the gutters, and now they will. So we will tack this one in place. The sideboards, we're going to go ahead and nail those in as if they're staying, and they are. So a little bit more work here, and, uh, and we're there. I'm going to put this one back to help make sure we get a good line up on the bottom ones. We're in our last two windows, and the demo's done. I've gotten everything broken out. This is the top plate, the one that goes above the window and the header. Now, when you look at the framing that I've got to deal with, I've got four inches all the way around right next to the existing window, which gives me about this much back here and that much free, and I really don't want that. Plus, 
I have got a two and seven eighths gap on this one to contend with. That's a lot a gap. So that's just about two two by fours. So what I want to do is I want to take a two by four, I want to push it up against the header that I have, screw it in place, take these guys, screw them, them on like that, so I get a good moment connection. And then we will take, after that assembly is done, we take this piece and nail it to that. That'll make it very firm and very solid. Now for this piece, I've got an eighth to play with, and I really don't want a whole lot of variation here. So I am gonna take this to the jointer and get a good flat face. And if I've got any left, I'll take it to the planer and kick this back. I don't have to mill these. They're short and there's not enough room and that overall length to get much twist or much variation. So let's get over to the jointer and the planer and let's get started. Well, the shop is a mess and that's part of the price you pay for trying to accelerate things. I would have loved to have this place set up before I do any major projects. And I can't find screws that I need, and I'm not willing to go out and buy some. These are just a little bit too short. Well, it just means we're going to end up countersinking them a little deeper. I'm over here at the compound miter saw, and I have my stop set up over here. And when I cut it off, I get a section of two and three quarter inches. Now, two and three quarter inches, that's not our one and seven eighths, but... When you include the thickness of the blade, then you get there. And that's something to remember. It seems simple enough, but I can't tell you how many times I've made that mistake. So I'm set up over here for length. Now, on these boards that I'm getting ready to cut, I'll tell you now, I haven't measured any of them, and I'm not going to. They're all going back to the way they came from, all in the same place. The only thing I'm changing is I'm dropping that top board, casing board down two and seven eighths. If I take two and seven eighths off all these side casing boards and put them back where they came from, chances are they're going to go back right. So that's the whole logic behind this. And by the way, anytime you can cut something the right length and not measure, that's a good thing. It's less chance to mess it up. Can't do that. Okay, now, I don't know if this will get in there or not. There are two nails right here, and they go down about that far. Those nails are proud, and they've just impacted my fence enough that I'm going to turn this over and do it the other way. The same is true for the sides, uh, the side moldings. I use the same stop, same cutoff length to cut those to length as well. That finishes up the cutting for this project. Everything else involved is now assembly. So we'll take our pieces, head back up to the house, and we'll put this whole thing together. Well, this is my spacer and it feels huge, but I need about this much width to drop the window casing so that it will clear the gutter that's just outside. Now, another thing, this is the width right here that frames things out. Now, originally, that width may have come all the way to the wall. I don't know, but the wood isn't here. So this is what I've got to screw to, and that's the reason for this configuration. This will make right up to this board right here, and then I've got support out to there. So, sorry about that. Probably a little noisy. So we'll take this, and I'll put a toe there just for balance. And try to keep out of the insulation and I'll push it all the way up tight against the window hold him in place try to get him centered and once the first one's in it's all over but the crying so I'll get the rest of these driven
And as you can see, I'm, I'm, I'm real sturdy in there. This is going to work out real well and all the way out to the end. And I'm far enough front out here that I can take these boards and I have something to screw to later. So we'll start putting the casing back together again, starting with this top board. Well, this top plate, as I said, it goes right here. It's a nice fit. Trying to keep the insulation in place as much as possible, pushing it all the way back against the window. Now, when they take these windows out and put the new ones in, they'll butt up flush against with the bottom of this and things will be just fine. Now it's obvious that I'm going to be putting insulation in up there, but I won't be doing that until I put these boards. I, these have got to come out at a later date, and then we'll fix it up at that time. But right now, that's step one. Now let's get these side panels on. Now keeping track of your insulation is a little bit of a pain, but we'll get him all tucked in there in just a minute. Let's see how we fit. That is just as I left it. And we gotta I know that seemed a little bit out of place. What I want is I've got to be flush up against this board right here. That's what I'm nailing to. But down there below, I've actually got a mark down there that tells me where I should be. And that's where the finish changes. So right now, I feel like I'm just exactly where I need to be. So we'll give it a couple of nails and we're in good shape. Now when we put these side moldings on, we'll get a, a nail inside the paneling here and in the strip, and that'll help stabilize it a bit. So we'll get the other side done now. Well, the moldings are pretty simple. All you really want to do is just to make sure they go back where you started. You need enough right there, because we will be shooting a couple. It will go right in there and help tie that together. The other thing that's important and this is the little things, but you'll, if you don't get all this insulation plugged in there and you start pulling it, it just keeps coming out. So take a moment. This is where, what did I always say? Prep is everything. So get that tucked in there and then you should be in pretty good shape. Now, considering the fact that these things came off, I've got a very good idea where they go back on again because the lines are all still there. So it's not hard to get it back in the right place. Now, the last bit is we want to help tie this into place. This is the scariest part because this could blow out. So just be very careful where you put him. And it did right there. That'll be a cleanup. That is not insurmountable. That is fixable. With any of these projects, you've got a lot of fill and a lot of cleanup, and that'll be the subject of another episode. Well, of course, the last thing to do is the top, and you might be asking, why even bother? Well, I'll tell you what. You take this thing and you don't put it up there and you put it in a closet somewhere, the next thing you know, you spill something on it, you lose it, and then you gotta recreate it, you gotta rematch the color, 
And at that point, you really ask, asking yourself, why didn't I put it up there in the first place? So a couple of tacks to hold it in place. It's not pretty, but we know we're coming back and we're coming back after the windows are installed. So let's get him tacked up and then we'll recap. Well, we've got our top piece, our top piece of molding installed and it's fine. We won't lose it. And all the casing pieces are installed very tight and very square probably more so than previously. I'm very happy with the way this turned out. Are we finished? <laughs> no, not by a long stretch. We've got nail holes to fill. We've got to repair some of this shellac finish where it's been damaged, and that's easy enough to do, but that's gonna be for another episode, as is these top boards up here. But I've got new knives on order, and we can duplicate this pattern. So we'll wait till these windows are installed and then we'll revisit this and we'll get new plank installed up there. And after that, we may have to investigate paint. <laughs> Paint's not something I do too well, but we may explore it. We may not. Don't know. At any rate, we're finished for this episode and I hope I see you for the next episode in Roby's Workshop.